mail bag time again. Let's see what I've got here. I think this might be a review item in this box. We'll get to that soon enough. So these are a bunch of camera mounts, like hot shoe, cold shoe kind of mounts, we you want to call them. I've actually used these to mount my lights up here on my shelf. These are screwed to the side of the shelf. I can just slot the lights into them and it holds them up there. And I used the last ones I had, so I thought I'd better get some more. These took a while to arrive, but at least they got here in the end. So it's just a Ethernet RJ45 type connector. Apparently there's actually a difference between the Ethernet connections and the RJ45. Apparently there's a slight difference. Uh, I can't believe it was now. I did look it up. But yeah, it's, anyway, it's it's an Ethernet connection. So you've got uh, two cables and you drop, plug them together and extend the cables. That's all they're for. It's called an RJ45 coupler, but yeah, anyway. Three of them, again, these took ages to arrive. I ordered these months ago. Resistors. Maybe it's in the last mail bag, I'm not sure, maybe another one. I talked about my motorhome and having to update the system in there to stop the fuses blowing in certain situations. In certain circumstances the fuses will blow. So here is supposedly a 100 watt 0.2 ohm resistor. I'm not sure about the 100 watt part, but anyway. <laughs> maybe the 10 watts. I, I think I believe 10 watts more. So the idea is that where I've got it set up so that it links the two batteries together, like the vehicle battery and the motorhome battery. I've got them going through a big relay. So when the vehicle is basically running and charging the battery, it'll also link in the house battery of the motorhome and charge that as well. So if it's getting pretty low, it'll help boost that one up. But if that battery is very flat or it's got some heavy loading on it, it'll pop the fuses that I've got in there. So I've got like a 40 amp fuse in line as protection. But it will actually pop that in some circumstances. So I actually want to put some serious resistors in there to reduce that problem. The idea is to try and reduce the maximum available current so it will drop off a little bit through the resistor. I'd rather have the resistor get hot than blow the fuse. Oh, there's some ball joint mounts. So in the previous my bag as well, so I talked about some other mounts. So here's the ball joints. So these are for certain kinds of like windscreen mounts and things like that for vehicles. So I've got some dash cams and as I explained in the previous video, they use the ball joint for mounting and the suction cup section had failed. And these are just adapters, so I should actually better use one of these suction cups and screw that on. Excellent. Now this bag is already pretty much open already, look, this is how it came. Didn't have to open that. That's not very good, is it? It's kind of a ratchet, but it's not. So you see it's got these pinions here, which are basically used for drills. So you've got a handheld electric drill. You've got the chucks on them. Well, you use chuck keys. The idea is you can use this to tighten them up. I'm not sure what it needs to be on a ratchet, but, you know, I think, I think a fixed one would have been fine. But anyway, I've got a drill which doesn't have a chuck key for it, and I tried to get a chuck key for it, and the thing was absolutely garbage. It was almost like it was made of aluminium or something. Aluminium. 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 It's bought in a local shop and it was about $20 or something like that. And I tried to use it and it just literally just ripped the teeth off it when I went to use it to do up a drill bit in the drill. It was absolute garbage. Um, so I thought, well, I might as well get one from China then. But <laughs> and uh, this is actually cheaper, I think. It actually feels better, it actually feels relatively heavy. So I think this is probably better than the one I bought in the shop. Don't forget to check out the links down below for these things too if you're interested in them. Ah, finally arrived. It's taken me three goes, three goes to try and get one of these things. The first two never made it. So I got this one from somebody else. What is it you're asking? Well, it's not a crimper. You know, that's what it said on the packaging. It's not a crimper. So it's actually a cable gland tool. So the idea is you've got these cable glands on things, which go through, like this, this tile of thing. You can use this to get things in and out. But the idea is you can get into here, which pushes that down, and then you can pull it out. In theory. 
but that screws in the way in this case. Yeah, of course it is. So I can't even demonstrate it. But yeah. A bunch of plugs. Yeah, use it on plugs, absolute garbage. But that's what you have to use. I was basically ran out of plugs to use, so now I've got some more. If I don't like them. Got plenty of packaging around it. Ah, it's not a review item, it's something else. Fans. I think that's 25 and 38 mil, something like that. Comes with some attachments and mounting bolts and stuff. There's a wiring for it. And there's grills. But I actually got these because my Valhalla um, 2500 EP, I don't know the names, <laughs> got a plastic fan in there. But it's making an awful racket, I want to replace it. And I spent ages trying to find a suitable plastic frame fan. Because it's 115 volt. I was just I had trouble finding one. The only place I could actually find one was AliExpress, believe it or not. I tried Mauser, I tried DigiKey, I tried Arrow, iOS components, Element 14, all of them are metal frame. And you think, okay, metal frame's better. Yes, yeah, well, yes it is. But in this instance, the piece of test equipment I need to put this fan into requires an insulated fan. So I actually need a 115 volt fan. Now these actually interestingly marked as 110 to 240 volt. Let's hook one up and see what happens. Well, as I foot up to my hopping meter over here, what could possibly go wrong? I'm going to turn the voltage right down first. Down to about 100 volts or so. Let's turn this on. Okay. So hey, look at that as a good guess, 100 volts. That's actually blowing a fair bit of area, it's actually doing alright. It's doing 7.5 watts. So let's see what we can do with this. Wind the voltage up. I did hear it change slightly, going to 120. So there you go, it's 200, you know, I'll do 230. It's doing 5.5 watts at 2.30 and the power factor dropped down to 0.4 so I think it is doing some kind of active control. Interesting. Let's wind it back down to 100. Did hear it drop but the power factor increased. So I see how low I can go with this thing. Well the power factor is increasing with a lower voltage. Okay, look at that, 25 volts, and it's still going, with a much better power factor. There you go, that's right off there. Okay. Oh, that seems right, actually. It seems okay. I mean, yes, it's a bit noisy, but it's still way quieter than the fan that's in the unit. <laughs> I've got some bonus packages. I had a couple of things arrive this week, and I'm going to tack them onto another mailbag. There's only got a couple of things. And I'm way ahead of mailbag videos, so I thought I'd add some more stuff in. A couple of spudger tools. I've purchased a few things recently. Spudgers. It's basically a really thin piece of stainless spring steel. Really thin. It's got these stickers on it so you've got something to hold on to and it slice your hand open. So there's that one. And there's another one the same. Got two of the same ones. It's quite good for separating things, I think, like screens and things like that. I think actually what I had in mind when I got these was um, things like iPhone batteries where you had that tape which is in there. They can be hard to get out sometimes that tape which holds the batteries in breaks and you can't get to it. They can be hard to get out, it's basically have to leave the things out. So thinking if I get some of these really flexible ones, I could probably use this to get underneath the battery so you can just bend it around, you know, get it around underneath it. And then try and cut through the tape with that, you know, the bit of IPA on it or something, you know, put some IPA in there and use this to help cut through it. That's what I was thinking of with these anyway, so that's why I've got a couple of them. Links down below. 
this is a review item so i'll be doing a review on this thing as well as showing this we'll cut through the box itself here we go it's the peak scr 100 so i did a review previously for peak electronics when i did the esr 70 meter make sure you go and check out that video if you haven't already seen it if you're interested in esr meters good little meter in fact i'll even show you it it's right here i'll keep it handy in my drawer i'll keep a little drawer to see with different meters which i use from time to time and that's in there good little meter for testing capacitors into it in circuit as well so i did a full review on that i actually found that i need a triac tester there's something i'm trying to repair and it has um, bad triax, well potentially bad triax. I don't know if it's got a bad triax. I've got nothing to test it with. <laughs> so I got hold of Peak, Jeremy, who I dealt with last time about the previous review, and said, hey, I could use a triax tester. And I said, would you be willing to send me one for a review? And he said, yeah, sure. Here is the Peak SCR 100 triax and thyristor analyzer. So I'll be doing a full review on this. It's got some information here about specs. There you go, there's the specs page. Have read through that in your own time. I think we'll try it, exhibit. Tricky to test because of them being AC based and things like that. And yeah, I actually have a trike here which I pulled out of a device which I'm not sure if it's okay or not. Let's hook it up and see if it actually works. I don't actually know if it works. I, I don't know. So, this device here is a BTA24 600 BA, is it? I can't remember. Anyway, let's have a look. What do we get? Try to test it. Excellent. MT1, MT2, gate. Looks like it might actually be alright. So yeah, I'll be doing a full review on this thing, make sure we check that out. The review for this may be before or after this video, I really don't know, it depends on where I slot this in amongst the skimming things, because I'm literally five weeks ahead on mailbag videos at the moment, I'm trying to catch up on that, it's a bit ridiculous, so I'm actually not sure whether the review will be before or after this, depends on how I can slot this video in. Just look for my review playlist, I've got reviews, and you'll see the Triac Tester and the ESR70 in there, which I did previously, in those review lists, even I did review. Maybe now, might already be there, might be next week, might be this week, who knows? Check out the playlist to find out. Don't forget to check out links down below. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed, click like if you like the video. Catch you later.